right, so it's obvious that we're working on the battery box for this thing right now. And kind of choosing to go down a, just a familiar path on this one to build like an angle iron, an angle iron tray on the, uh, on the base. And then what I'll do is build up a couple tabs on the side with like some kind of either bolt down cover or something. Now, the battery itself, we're gonna use an anti-gravity uh, AG801 eight cell. And we're gonna tuck this thing up right about here. And then to mount that, to go a step further, what I'm gonna do is use some, uh, some rods and use uh, a point where the stock exhaust crossover would hang from, as well as the center stance. This is actually gonna be a bolt-in tray. And uh, it shouldn't, shouldn't be too bad to make. As of now, you see I've already got my initial four pieces cut for the, the bottom portion of the tray. I'm gonna go ahead and get those welded up. And then from there, I can uh, kind of get the battery and tray held up under the bike, and then I can start running like the, the piece of metal rod and kind of getting the shape and figuring out how I want to really hang it before I start tagging stuff in place. So I'm gonna get the welder out and get to burning this in. So I'm making this battery tray right here. And what I did is I've laid this out and I've squared it up on this plate here. You saw me bend the, uh, bend the rods here. And what that is to do is up here, it's gonna be a little hard to see. Up here I have a, um, like a metal bushing that I'm gonna tie the, the upswept part of those rods to. So the rod, it's gonna extend down and then come forward. So the, the width on the bike there is what I've duplicated here. So it's not gonna be in an area that's gonna be really easy to weld to. So I wanna make sure I get my pieces even. That's why I went ahead and just did some crossbars here temporarily just to hold it, you know, just tacked up, held it, hold it square. I'm gonna hold this whole assembly up and then try to tack those metal bushings on the back of here. And then hopefully those will maintain their position because I want this to be bolt in, bolt out. Once we have those in place, um, or at least tacked up, then this thing's gonna be sitting in there and I can go ahead and start placing the tray, you know, obviously to be in this general position, um, get an idea where that's gonna be. And then the next step will be bend, making a bend on the front of this, bending it probably upwards and inwards to meet up with the front mount. So that's gonna be that tab there, if you guys can see this. I'm gonna have this bar going in here. All right. It's not gonna, there we go. So I'm gonna have that bar sitting right there and then those rods that we're gonna be bending up are gonna come up from here and hopefully I can bend them with precision and have them bend up and in and we'll meet up with the corner of that. And then I can unbolt it from the back, swing it down and then pull it out. And the whole thing will come out nice and easy. So, I'm gonna go ahead and mock this thing up, get it tacked up. You're not gonna be able to see any of it, so I'm not even gonna bother setting up the camera. And we'll go from there. All 
All right, so we have the battery tray kind of mocked up. It's fitting, fitting exactly how we want it to fit. You can remove it and install it pretty easy. So this is gonna be the left side of the tray. Now, what I need to do is mount up a solenoid and I wanna do that on the left side of the tray here using a more modern blade style fuse solenoid. So I just prefer these because it's easier to find blade style fuses should you need one um, instead of like the, the strip kind which this thing came with. So anyway, went ahead and I made a C bracket, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to weld this on the left side of the tray here. I'm going to weld this on the left side of the tray here. So it'd be kind of like that. And then I'm going to build a couple standoffs and then from there we'll mount the solenoid so it'll be sitting in that orientation. It'll be easy access but still out of the way on the bike and uh, it'll be good. So I'm going to go ahead and get this thing in the vise, get the welder out and burn this piece in before I make the two standoffs and get the solenoid mounted. All right, everybody, it's been a minute in this video. I know maybe I look different. The, the bike looks different. We're at a different point in time here since I started the battery tray project, but we're back on it. So now it's time to finish this up because we're getting ready to finish up the bike. So we're talking about batteries. What I'm going to use is uh, a common battery I use on the CX series bikes. Uh, a lot of the a lot of the builds I do actually. It's an anti gravity AG801. So this is a very compact lithium ion battery. I've used them a, a ton of times. You have to match it with your with your corresponding regulator. So that's why we have the Rix regulator rectifier in there because you want to make sure that you don't overcharge this thing. That's what can cause these things to melt down. The, the issues you see online. So I'm going to link above to uh, kind of a, a wiring fundamentals video. If you haven't seen it yet, I go over that in detail uh, among some other things. But regardless, this is a battery we're going to use. And I had already built the tray around a dummy block of this battery. And so you're going to notice a little slack here. That's fine. That's because I'm going to put some foam around the bottom to help insulate any kind of vibration the battery has. So, oh man. That's not cool. Ah, come on, anti-gravity. That paper's not, anyway. All right, so this is gonna be pretty simple. We already have this kind of mocked up under the bike and we know it's gonna fit. The only thing I really have left to do is go ahead and make kind of a, a couple straps here, like a couple hooks. And then we're gonna just use a traditional rubber battery, battery strap to hold it down and that's gonna stay in place. You can see on one side here, you know, we built this panel and we have that to hold our solenoid. So basically we're going to have some real short battery cables. We're going to have the power going from the hot side of the battery to one pull on the solenoid here. And it is marked. So whatever solenoid you get, pay attention to that. And that's going to have our built-in main fuse here. And then we have our plug that's going to run up to the rest of the harness. And then on this side, we're going to have another cable. Obviously this one's going to run up be another short one and it's go, gonna go basically directly above it to the pole on the starter motor itself. So once we get the strap done the only other thing I want to do is probably go ahead and put uh, like a piece of metal down here to help be like a like a like a mini skid plate just to help keep rocks and stuff from hitting the battery that's gonna come up from under you know from the bottom of the front tire and then we'll paint this thing and be done with it. So pretty straightforward. But let me uh, let me go ahead and, and just as a refresher, we'll go uh, put this thing up under the bike. Show you how it mounts. All right, so the tray is in, and as of this point, what I've been doing is taking different terminals here for my uh, battery cables and determining how I want to route these things. So between bending the actual terminals themselves, I have a layout here. So here's the routing. What we're gonna do is we have our main starter lug. This is gonna make a 90 straight down, and that's gonna meet up with a vertically bent lug on the uh, solenoid itself. The negative side on the battery, it's gonna be the closest one here. That one's gonna run straight up. And I'm thinking, 
I might tie it into a longer stud on the starter itself, okay? And then that'll allow me to run another one all the way up the bike as I'm going to actually put a main ground lug uh, about that point on the camera that are tied into the coil bracket. And then from there I'll, you know, I'll have uh, a few things here. I'll have the, the engine grounded through that lug close to the battery. I'll have the starter mod kind of done, which is a ground mod. And then I'll also have like a nice direct path to the rest of the harness ground which we're going to create. The positive side is on the far far end of the battery here. I did end up flipping it around um, because I'll show you here just to have enough bend, enough space for the uh, for the actual cable to bend and go over. So I'm gonna pull this thing back out. We're gonna start making cables. All right, here we are on the battery, and I'll show you the routing here. So this is gonna be our battery hot side here. So this is just gonna run up, make a 90, and then run to the outside here. And then when I have my battery strap, that'll allow me another point to set that on top to hold that cable down. This is going to be the negative side. I'm going to run this one basically up 90 to about right here to the to the starter body itself or to the starter mount. And then this one is going to go to the, the starter. So what I have to do is uh, I'll start with the regular battery hot and then uh, from there I can go ahead and just um, work on this one. I'll get that one started and then I'll have to work on the starter cable. I'll put this one on, run the cable down, and determine how far down it needs to go to work for that. So pretty straightforward. And what I like to use is some six gauge. I get this stuff uh, from O'Reilly's. It's a uh, actually a, it's high strand, pretty flexible. It's good stuff. And then I always make sure I use adhesive lined heat shrink. Now link above to uh, the electronics video where I explain maybe differences in heat shrink and some other components that I use difference between adhesive line and non-adhesive line and some other stuff. So go ahead and watch that along with some other electrical videos. But um, I'm going to go do the hot sides with red and then the uh, negative sides of the ground sides with black. That way you don't confuse anything. All right, so first we're going to get an idea of our total length that we need for the cable itself. So we'll be about there. Can I get our bend going? There to there. Cut this. And this is going to be the more difficult side that we're going to have to have kind of clocked correctly. So I'll start with this. Cut some, cut some of the coating back. double check our length here. We want it to extend out just a little bit. So I'm going to cut off a little bit more. All right. All right. So I think I'd be happy with that. So that gives us a little bit of length extending out. From here, I'm going to go ahead and put some flux on this, clamp it, and we'll be on our way. I kind of do this my own my own way here. I'm not going to say there aren't better crimpers to use in this situation, but I've kind of got kind of got my method down. Then from here, Otter. See the color change working its way down that terminal. Let me know when it's hot enough. There's no rush on this. Just you don't want to put too much heat in, and you definitely want to put enough.
right, last piece of the puzzle for the battery tray. You can see I got the hook here that we made. We made two of them. We got our battery in here. Put the strap on. We have another hook we made. So one thing that's important, I gotta consider the, the, the cables that are gonna be running underneath this. I want a little bit of stretch, but you don't want it to be like too tight. So we have that. Kind of letting it naturally hang might be about perfect. So I can still lift that up. And that should allow getting that thing off. That should be good to go. final piece of the puzzle for this battery tray we are going to go ahead and build like a little kind of skid plate just a finishing plate for the bottom here so over here on my bandsaw I've got uh, I've got a piece marked out I'm going to go ahead and cut it out and then we'll get that bent up welded in and that thing's done we can paint it put it on the bike All right, so we've got our plate made here. Just took a little while to bend it up, get it fitted just right. That's gonna lay in there. And we'll just put a bead around it and that'll act as a nice, nice strengthening piece. And a little rock guard, you know, just some added protection to uh, kind of finish up the bottom of that thing. So I'm gonna go ahead, get this thing welded up and then we'll throw some paint on it. Mount it up and it will be done. All right, so we finally got this battery tray knocked out. I think it only took me, what, six months to make or something like that? Kind of a weird video. Obviously, we started out, I had a big old beard, and we're, you know, much further along now. But I don't know, the, the battery tray just kind of took a sidetrack, and I didn't have to get it done right away, so we didn't. Anyway, got it mocked up, got it finished, and all we have to do now is paint it and slap it on the bike. So we are one step closer to completion on the GL650. You're going to be seeing some more videos on it. It's making some good progress, and I'm looking at it now. It's going to be a damn good looking bike, so I hope you guys like it when it's done. Um, if this is the first time that you've seen any of my videos, take a cruise back through the channel. I've got a lot of different variety. You know, you can go back through the playlists I've made on the GL650 here or the CX500. I'm almost done with as well. And I uh, hope you guys like that. If you haven't already, definitely subscribe. Check me out on social media. It's just Brickhouse Builds across the board. And yeah, hope you guys like the video. Hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.